and that's Odin Holmes. And he tells me that he makes more mistakes than other people, but the reason that he gets things done anyway is that the compiler finds most of them, and he's going to tell us how he does it. Okay, just a show of hands, like, who else here makes totally stupid mistakes all the time? <laughs> Honest crowd. Um, truth is, it's actually really easy to make uh, stupid mistakes in bare metal designs. Um, we're doing a lot of bit manipulations, we're shifting things, we're masking things. Uh, there is essentially no uh, zero cost unit testing, at least not that goes down to the bare metal. Um, we don't typically use a lot of libraries. We write most of our code. Um, we also have really weird race conditions. Uh, even if you have a single processor, because you have interrupt service routines, um, almost everything you do, you're loading it into a work register, working on it, and then flushing it back to memory. And if you get interrupted during that uh, um, read, modify, write cycle, then, uh, and the uh, interrupt service routine touches that same address, even if it's masking off using different bits, then uh, um, when you return from the interrupt service routine, you have outdated data that gets flushed to RAM, and the change that the interrupt service routine made is lost. Bare metal means we're talking to the hardware, which is abstracted through special function registers, which are basically just an address in normal address space. They look like RAM to the compiler, but they're not. They're hard-coded to hardware functions, which means they're observable to the outside, like, you know, GPIO pin or you know, even a baud rate is observable. When, when do I change the baud rate, right? Um, we also have a lot of small bit fields, like sometimes just a single bit or three bits or something, and then uh, they're grouped into 32-bit registers, uh, so we're doing a lot of masking and shifting. Um, we also have odd behavior. The hardware divs get creative and uh, say, oh, if you're reading interrupt flags, well, you're going to clear those. So we're just going to automatically clear them whenever you read it. Uh, or there is uh, set to clear, which is basically a, a mailbox. It's uh, um, uh, a bit. You can't set it. The hardware sets it. And you can clear it by writing one for some reason. Um, we also have like memory mapped FIFO buffers. So if you're you know, reading from this address uh, twice, you'll get the first byte that came in over the UART and then the second byte that came out over the UART. And uh, we also have bit manipulation engines, which uh, encode like bit field data into the address. Um, the optimizer doesn't understand any of this. So we hit it over the head with volatile and say, don't touch this. Don't optimize this. You don't understand it. And it doesn't. And our code works. But it's not particularly optimized. So uh, me and some colleagues uh, got tired of making stupid mistakes. And so we uh, thought, well, before I was born, really smart people invited, invented something called the type system. And you know, it takes 30 years before it gets to embedded, right? So let's use that. Um, we want to make an abstraction layer above these hardware registers, but it has to be at least zero cost, or no one is going to use it, right? So to get to zero cost, uh, if you look at this first uh, struct field location, it doesn't have any data. Like, it doesn't have data members. But you can put data in it in its template parameters, right? If you look uh, our instantiation of it, my bit, uh, it's a const expert, first of all. Um, and it doesn't have data. So, you know, anyone that didn't sleep through Chandler's talk, this is gone, right? This is uh, um, not even in debug mode will you see this, right? And we can, uh, you know, because it's a, it's a variable, we can pass it to const expert functions, right? We don't care about the data. There is none. But we take the template parameters out and return a different type from this function you can essentially, uh, like in set, here we're just adding t to another template, but you could essentially call a classic uh, template meta function. And this is called the const expert meta function pattern. Um, if you look down to the bottom, this is uh, an example of user code. Uh, I call apply set my bit. It doesn't look like you're feeding this template meta program monster, but you are, right? Um, so it looks essentially like C, which embedded guys like, right? Um, in this uh, apply function, I, I left out the implementation because it's uh, you know, several thousand lines of template metaprogram code. But uh, 
what we're, you know, what the semantics of apply are is we take uh, all our parameters, uh, sort them, merge them, perform optimizations on them, and then generate code. Um, here's an example of library code. This is uh, generated by a Python script from the uh, chip manufacturer's uh, uh, data. Um, they basically have to publish all the bit fields that there are, where they are, and what's special about them to ARM. They do it wrong. I think I'm the only one that actually uses this data uh, to date. But um, most of the time, uh, um, you'll have a bit field for uh, already abstracted for every field that the chip has. And it's even almost named correctly. <laughs> and so this would be an example of user code. You know, We can write. We can write multiple things. Uh, if they're the same register, we'll actually merge those writes. Uh, um, we can read stuff. If we read multiple bit fields from one register or multiple registers, then under the covers, we'll just read the register and then uh, um, you know, selecting a uh, part of this uh, quasi-tuple, um, we'll just be masking off the bits the same way you do it in C. But uh, since we can also package uh, enum values, both the bit location and the value, then we can overload the equals operator and do the shift because uh, if you're interested in a bit field that doesn't start at bit zero, you're going to be shifting at some point. And we can do the shift at compile time, which is more efficient than you could do in C unless you got really crazy with macros. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, down at the bottom is probably the most interesting part. Uh, we basically stated we want this to be atomic. We didn't say how. Typically in uh, embedded, atomic means you turn off interrupts. But that's not efficient and has real-time uh, implications. Uh, there's actually a lot of other ways to make it atomic. Um, we can use the bit manipulation engine to turn it into just a write. Uh, we can use bit banding if it's just a single bit to turn it into just a write. We can uh, address narrower data. So if we have, like, I don't know, uh, um, bits 24 to something and the rest are reserved, we can just address that single byte in byte mode, and then it just turns into a write. And reserve bits, we just fill in zero. They have a default. Um, we can, uh, you know, if all else fails, if we're on uh, Cortex uh, M3 or higher, we can use load exclusive, store exclusive, which is kind of the compare and swap of ARM. Um, that has, you know, that's, that's a little slower at runtime. Or if, you know, all else fails, we're on M0 and we, none of the other uh, patterns match, then we can still turn off interrupts and be as bad as C. Uh, we also have a bunch of efficiency tricks. So um, if I use volatile, then the optimizer is never allowed to use this handy load multiple, store multiple uh, assembler instruction. Because the semantics of volatile are, um, if you have two volatiles, even if they're next to each other, the optimizer has to flush the first one back to RAM before it reads the second one. We don't have any semantics in between in C to express that we don't care uh, about reordering over that boundary, right? But with apply, uh, we say where we want the sequence points to be, and it can reorder the rest. Um, so uh, we can allow uh, load multiple, store multiple. We can sort by address, which means you can use load with offset a lot more often. Um, you know, loading a 32-bit address, if you're using thumb two, mostly 16-bit instructions, actually takes a couple of instructions, right? So if you already have a neighboring register and just can add something to that, uh, that's actually just one instruction, like load with offset is one, one line. Um, we can use bit banding uh, to you know, get around masking. Uh, not only atomic, also faster. Working on narrow data, same thing. Uh, turn reader modify writes into blind writes. Not only atomic, also more efficient. Um, we can also merge the initialization sequence of all of the peripherals, um, which is actually huge. Uh, if you're, if you're uh, um, a better developer, probably know like there's, I don't know, power clock registers. So every module is going to turn on its power clock the first thing it does in its initialization sequence. Well, we're loading the address and masking that register 20 times. If we were to merge all of those, then uh, the first one would cost the same and all the rest are free, right? So the way we do that, uh, I don't actually have to save, uh, I have to pass the uh, um, result of a write a function to apply immediately. I can also store it in a const expr 
I have to say auto because I can't type the type as a user. It's like this long. But uh, so I say const expr auto in it in my function definition. I can put all of these uh, bit field manipulations into there, and then I, um, I have a function that will just collect these from all of my classes, merge them all, do that initialization, and then turn on interrupts. Um, actually, the biggest accidental advantage, advantage to all this is right down at the bottom of my uh, metaprogramming. Um, I have a traits class which uh, by default generates code. I can also specialize that and suddenly I have a seam for unit testing right above the hardware. Like you can't get closer to the hardware than that. So I can do all my development on an IDE on my desktop where I can have a little bit of breakpoints and get everything to work and then put it into the hardware. Uh, and I'm not incurring any kind of runtime cost in the hardware design by abstracting it that way. Actually, it's the opposite. We've been porting uh, libraries from chip vendors to using our, our Quasi library, and we get a flash shrink of sometimes 10x, like an order of magnitude smaller. Um, a lot of that is coming from merge initialization, so it'll boot up quicker, yay. Uh, that doesn't usually matter. So it's, it's, it's not 10 times faster, it's maybe twice as fast, but still, you know, beating hand-coded C by 2x is cool. Um, I mean, theoretically, you could do it in C, but there's a teachability, uh, writability, readability trade-off versus efficiency that just doesn't pay off. Like, if you look on GitHub, who's using bit manipulation? Uh, 180 guys it include the header, two actually use it, and one it's a bug, right? So, uh, you know, that's obviously not very teachable or readable, but we can just put that way in the guts of our library. Only one guy needs to understand it, or maybe two in case he gets run over. But uh, <laughs> everyone else can use it because of uh, you know, this zero cost encapsulation of expertise that we have in C++. Thanks, everyone. If you want to contact me, there's the information.